Imagine you find yourself in a coffee shop and you're waiting in line to make your order. Just then, you see this girl you remember from your gym. She's hot and usually keeps to herself, but this time, she's walking towards you. Suddenly, she smiles at you. Your eyes meet and boy, it seems like she wants you as bad as you want her. Could she have been secretly obsessed with you all this while? Be unique, be different. Now, you're all set to introduce yourself when everything switches. She walks right past you, straight into the arms of her man who is standing behind you. Sorry, you're not the one. Not today, but here's the good news. You could be that guy soon, if you get your act together. But how, Mr. YouTube Man? Well, first off, if you're just like everybody else, why should she be obsessed about you? Nobody gets obsessed over something common. We only obsess over rare things. So, if you want someone to be really interested in you, you've got to be different in a cool way. It's like being a left-handed pitcher in baseball when most pitchers are right-handed. They throw the ball in such a unique way that it surprises everybody. Now, being different in your own special way might mean that not everyone will want to join your game right away. But here's a secret. You don't need everyone to play your game. You just need a few friends who really, really enjoy playing it with you. If you try to be liked by everyone, you might end up like that kid in class who gives away all his snacks just so everyone wants to sit with him, but at the end of the day, you might still feel lonely because nobody wants to share their snacks with him in return. Take somebody like Andrew Tate, for example. He believes in certain things strongly, and even though not everyone agrees with them, those who do don't just like him, they think he's amazing. Now, even those who've claimed to detest him might like him secretly, but don't want to show it because of the group they identify with. Either way, that's the sacrifice of being different and unique. You tend to gain haters, but guess what? You also gain people who would obsess over you. So what do you have to do to be different? Nothing. You just have to be you, after all. As the saying goes, everyone else is taken. So don't try to fit in, don't try to please her, and don't try to wear a mask. Love yourself. Change whatever it is that needs changing so the real you can shine. Build your personality around your person and not around another person and watch as not only the right people but the right women flock to you. Remember, being like everybody else might seem easier, but it's way more fun and easier actually to be yourself. Know when she's BS testing you. In relationships, it's widely acknowledged that mutual respect and personal boundaries are key to a strong, healthy relationship. Yet, women will constantly test these boundaries. Now, this is not wickedness on their part, no. It's nature challenging you to build your character and to make you stronger. This BS test can also be seen as a barometer for your confidence and your ability to maintain personal space. Now, let me say it again. This is not a matter of deceit or manipulation. This is just a woman's way of assessing compatibility and stability within a partnership. However, this doesn't mean that there aren't toxic women out there who actually do this with bad intentions, but that's another topic entirely. Now, let's say that you have a private study room in the house, so an emergency happens and you allow her into the room to discuss the matter. Then, just a day later, she might decide to come have lunch in your private room. This is a test, and you cannot afford to fail it by allowing her to have it her way. In such circumstances, it's important to maintain a balance. While being accommodating is often seen as an act of kindness, maintaining a space which allows you to function is another act of kindness. Respecting both partners' needs and space prevents the creation of a dependency that could potentially lead to the loss of respect or attraction in the relationship over time. You see, a woman needs a strong man because she knows that the world is a tough place and while they have their own strength, they need a man's strength too. So this kind of test is to see how tough you are when it comes to boundaries. You need to show her that you value your independence and the relationship equally. There are numerous ways through which a woman can BS test you. And what's more, they'll do it when you're most vulnerable. Maybe during a particularly busy week or when business ain't going so well. At such times, you might see her telling you to relax and take a day off. She might come up with statements that might make sense, like, you work too hard, let me treat you to a good blank. Trust me, you don't want to take that advice. Why? Because if things go south, no one's going to care that your woman was the one who kept you at home when you should be at work. Make the rules and stick to them. And anytime she throws something unusual your way, Know that it's a test, and you must pass. Hold yourself to higher standards. Upholding oneself to higher standards involves a commitment to personal growth. 
to leadership and integrity. You can't possibly pass a woman's BS test without this. I mean, if you're the type that sleeps with anything in skirts, what's gonna stop you from failing if your woman sets up one of her hot friends to seduce you? You need to be a high-value man, not only in words, but in actions. Here's something that you should understand. When you act like a king, any woman you choose automatically feels like a queen. Hence, when you hold yourself to higher standards, she gets respected just as you get respected. She gets loved where you're loved and gets the benefits that you get. Now tell me who wouldn't obsess over such a guy? A man whose name opens doors for her, even in his absence. So, in what ways should you hold yourself to higher standards? You see, constant self-improvement in all areas of life is vital if you want to get your girl obsessed with you. Areas such as personal development, career advancement, intellectual growth, and physical fitness are not negotiable. You just have to step up your game in these areas to a level whereby you walk into a room and you grab people's attention. Now, should you make all these improvements because you want to get a girl obsessed with you? Well, if that's your motive, then you're not going to do it right. Impure motivations like that will fail every time. You should improve yourself and your own life for personal satisfaction and fulfillment before you seek external validation. External validation is natural, and I understand, but it, again, wrong reasons, bad results. It's simple, really. If your head's not in the right place, you're not going to do it right. There was a time when I would always go to the library to pick up a book because I wanted to impress a certain course mate. Never worked out, and I think you know why. Because one day, she asked me about the book I was reading. That was my opportunity to get her, but I fumbled when I couldn't explain the book because I wasn't reading it. So that's an example of when you're doing a good thing for the wrong reason, you lose both. On the other hand, if you pursue greatness for the right reason, you will achieve it, and you'll also get that woman obsessed. Live a life you love. To cultivate a fulfilling life individually contributes to the health and happiness of a romantic relationship. It's essential that each person maintains a sense of identity and leads a life that is rewarding and engaging on a personal level. This separate sense of fulfillment can prevent the possibility of feeling stifled or overwhelmed by the relationship itself. I mean, just think about it. If you're not happy with the life you live, how could you possibly make someone who's living with you happy? So fill your life with activities you love and satisfy your desire for adventure. That's going to enhance your self-worth and give you a sense of purpose. When your woman sees you living passionately and with contentment, it naturally elevates their perceived value. It's the combination of self-achievement and personal joy that often attracts one partner to another. So what makes people happy and content with the life that they're living? This usually comes from a fulfilling career, hobbies, friendships, and personal goals. This also projects a sense of completeness and independence that is inherently attractive. You see, when evaluating potential long-term compatibility, women often consider their man's life's achievements and happiness. Indeed, this gives them an idea of their future together. When each individual in a relationship takes pride in their accomplishments and has a clear vision for their life, it leads to a lot of happiness. Shared goals and dreams can flourish in such an environment. And it's not rocket science to understand why a happy home of two people who are achieving their goals is a perfect place to be. Living a life filled with personal passion and achievements not only makes you more desirable to a woman, the security that brings allows you to be the best version of yourself and also provide for her. Bond through the us-against-them mentality The us-versus-them mindset is a situation where a group solidifies its unity by identifying a common threat or adversary. This idea is not limited to any gender-specific thing or field. It is a universal social behavior. Russell Brunson's book, Expert Secrets, underlines this principle, highlighting how shared challenges or enemies can create a sense of connection and solidarity amongst people. Applying this concept means recognizing and bonding over common struggles or concerns. However, it's crucial to approach this technique with a sense of responsibility and mindfulness so that you can avoid building on sinking grounds. What do I mean by this? Well, you have to make sure that you know what you're against, and you have to make sure that she's really against it too. For instance, if you're against the new wave feminists and she says that just to make you happy, eventually she won't be able to keep up that charade and then what happens? Everything goes to hell. So take for instance a couple that's passionate about health and fitness, uniting against let's say the synthetic meat that's being produced in labs and other unhealthy foods. This shared enemy can result in supportive discussions and actions, catering to mutual interest and strengthening the relationship. You see. 
This is so effective because it draws on something that you're both passionate about and something that you both agree on. As you know, just because you're a couple doesn't mean you're going to agree on everything. But this time around, you guys have something to agree on and you're passionate about and that is good. After all, every reasonable person knows that being fat is not good for the body. That's just too much mass for them bones to always carry. And not to mention the effects on the heart. So, if that's something that your woman is against, first of all, <laughs> lucky you. Then, you should absolutely make that an issue. Try to create awareness in your community and bring more people in. With time, that will not only make her obsessed with you, but also give her the idea that you are her soulmate. You see, shared challenges can form the basis of strong connections. Once the bond is built on principles of understanding, respect, and desire for positive change, then you've added another layer of attraction to your relationship. Pull back. Pulling back in a relationship basically means that you should maintain your individuality and not overwhelm your woman with the attention or affection. This is quite like the BS test we talked about earlier. The key difference is that in the BS test, it's the woman that's making the move, while in this case, you're the one that's making the move. You see, space and independence are essential in any relationship for both the man and the woman. Now, while it's okay for a woman to be clingy, it's not okay for a man to be. When a woman is too clingy and needy, it's left for the man to step up and enforce healthy boundaries. But when a man does it, who's going to set the boundaries? Trust me, women don't generally want to do that. It's not typically in their nature. What happens is that her respect for you decreases, and eventually so does her love. So, let's say that you've been the one calling every morning, and you've been maintaining that energy for weeks, three times a day. Man, that's already way too much. It's time to pull back. It's time to allow her to reach out. After all, a relationship is not a one-way street. You give and you receive. Not that you give all the attention and all she does is receive and never give back. You see, pulling back is about being self-aware. Recognizing when it's beneficial to give your partner room to initiate intimacy and connection. Now, this is necessary to build a decent relationship. But if you want to get her obsessed, you gotta take it further. So, let's say you guys are having a conversation that you know she's really into. Well, at the peak of that combo, you gotta excuse yourself. Now, she might wait for you to reach out again so that you guys can continue. Don't, and that's all you gotta do. Pull back at the peak of whatever you guys are doing, and that captivates her. Let her crave your input, your presence. That way, she'll have enough time to see how much she needs you around. Communicate on a deeper level. If you're like me, then over the years, you must have subscribed to hundreds of YouTube channels, but there's only two or three channels that you really watch. Why? That's likely because the individuals on those channels present themselves authentically and share more than just tips and tricks. They share their lives. That's also what we want to do on this channel. I tell you about past experiences and things that I've learned over the years. You see, it's more than just running a YouTube channel for the sake of money. But we do it because we've lived life and we've gained certain experiences along the way that are worth sharing. These experiences can help make your life more meaningful and enjoyable. And in this age where masculinity is under attack, we feel the need to help our fellow brothers in whatever way we can. This is what we do, and it's what some other channels do. This kind of connection is precisely what distinguishes content that's merely informative from content that is actually engaging and impactful. Think about creators like Alex Hormozzi and Thomas Frank, to name a few. These guys offer you a piece of themselves in every video, and that's what a solid relationship should be like. You should look right into her eyes and tell her about your passion, about your past experiences and how they've shaped you. Why her eyes, though? I believe in the cheesy old corny old expression that they are the window to the soul. I believe it. You need to sometimes have conversations that are beyond the surface. Conversations that embrace their thoughts, feelings, and experiences. You don't even need to use words. In fact, sometimes it's better to not use words. All you have to do is create an atmosphere where she not only hears what you're saying, but she feels it. Send those short, sweet texts. Texts are wonderful because you got time to think and craft something beautiful, but sometimes what you need to do is leave room for curiosity and interest. It's not okay to always send texts that overwhelm her with just too much information. Walls of text, as they call it. The key to this strategy is to be engaging without being overbearing. A simple message like, thinking of you or hope you're having a great day, can have a warm impact and make her feel valued without demanding immediate attention or a lengthy response. It's an invitation to connect rather than a demand for their time. 
This approach aligns with the principle of less is more, suggesting that by being concise, you naturally create an air of mystery. It prompts her to want to investigate, to want to know more. Then she wants to call or text you back with something like, how's your day been? Ultimately, keeping messages short and simple ensures that when you do share something, it is meaningful and valued. So yes, you should follow the abbreviation K-I-S-S. Keep it stupid and simple. So that's it, guys. If you act like this around her, she will be obsessed with you. Put all this into action and you can't go wrong, unless you do. In which case, you fucked it up, not me. Anyways, got any questions? Leave them in the comments. We'd love to help. Also, you can learn more in the next video. Okay, bye.